As someone who's made these videos, as well as use the Canon M6 Mark II, along with some EFM glass for your daily and professional use, and also the fact that I have the M100 and absolutely love that camera, and I probably might buy the M15 in the future if the prices go down enough as well. I'm probably the least biased person to tell you about this system. Obviously, that was a joke. I do love the EFM system and I'm absolutely biased towards it. And um, I guess I'm also really biased towards the RF system because those are the systems that I use and do work for me. And I think this is the reality is that everyone's got their own bias, regardless of what they say. Point is, I do have a bias towards the system because it does work for me. And after this video, you could decide whether it could possibly work for you as well. I've been using the EFM system since early 2021. I started off with this beaten up Canon M100 paired with the EFM 22mm f2 STM. And ever since, I've expanded it by getting the M6 Mark II, which I've made a ton of videos about, as well as getting a bunch of lenses such as the 55 to 200mm f4 to 5.6 IS STM, as well as the kit lens, the 15 to 45 f3.5 to 6.3 IS STM, and also getting the wonderful for 32mm f1.4 prime lens uh, SEM as well. That will conclude the native mount lenses from Canon that I own on this system. Now, I do own a couple of TD Artisans EFM glass as well, namely the 17mm f1.4. This is a manual focus lens, as well as the 7.5mm f2 fish eye lens, which is also a manual focus lens. It's no secret that Canon has stopped making cameras and lenses for this mount. However, before that, they did make a couple of pretty cool lenses alongside some pretty underwhelming lenses in terms of a performance point of view. They're meant to be small though, which is great because I love pairing them with these quality small size cameras, which is the whole point of the EFM system anyways. Throughout the entire life cycle of the EFM mount, Canon has only made 8 lenses for it. These might seem like some limiting choices, and you are right, but here's where the third party companies come in and save the day. Sigma and Viltrox have both made three lenses each for this mount. They're all autofocus lenses and they're all f1.4 primes. Their qualities are great and they do fill in the gaps which the Canon EFM does lack, uh, though they might be on the slightly bulkier side. Companies like TD Artisans as well as 7 Artisans have made lenses for this mount and they are really good quality, really cheap, really tiny, but they are all manual focus lenses. Another great thing about the EFM mount is the fact that it is a mirrorless camera mount, so your opportunities for adapting older lenses is vast. And the fact that it is a Canon manufactured mount, you also get the opportunity to adapt from probably the most developed lens system ever, which is the EF and EFS system, and get native performance. And lastly, obviously you get to adapt uh, vintage SLR lenses as well, such as the Canon EFD, FL lens, and much more. It doesn't matter about the brand. As long as they have the correct flange distance, you're good to go. Safe to say you're presented with a multitude of options which could lead you to endless possibilities. Obviously, with the discontinuation of this mount, the prices of these gears have been going down significantly, especially in the deuce market. Here's the important question though, is it worth buying into a discontinued mount even if the prices are lower than usual? The answer is simple, you obviously don't want to buy into a dead camera mount because obviously after the mount is discontinued, the camera stops working. On a serious note, there are some pros and cons into buying into the system at the moment. The prices are ridiculous for a bunch of these cameras and lenses which do work well and have a good size but they will never get another update. So if you're hoping one day you could use your camera as a vacuum cleaner, I'm sorry but you will never get that firmware update. Here's a list of all the EFM cameras and what I would generally recommend spec-wise. Obviously, do your own research after narrowing it down. If you're planning on using autofocus for any of these cameras and would prefer to achieve focus within the century, these cameras do not have dual pixel autofocus, so I would get rid of these choices immediately. If you're looking for 4K video, then get rid of these choices. And if you're looking for 4K video with 120fps with no crop, you're left with this camera. But if you're looking for a camera that can do all of these things without overheating, look elsewhere. By the way, the OG Canon EOS M camera has like this cult following uh, because it has like this magic lens support which allows it to do like this crazy raw recording but with a workflow that I can't even pretend to understand. So if you're interested in that, go look it up. This seems like a pretty straightforward answer, but before that, let me just show you this. Images, size, 
weight, and price. Obviously, there's a lot more to consider than this, but I'm just sharing why this system does work for me. However, if you're one of those who are afraid of the scarcity of one of the most popular lens mounts to ever hit the used market, obviously stay away from this and I will make the effort to stay away from you. As you can probably tell, I'm absolutely biased towards this system and obviously for good reason because it's a system that has served me well for so many years and it will continue to, though it is not suitable for everyone. Obviously, just like every other decision in your life, do your own research, make your own decisions while I keep making Canon EFM videos to piss off the comment section in my videos. That's it for today's video. Subscribe if you want to see some more like absurd camera choices that I make. And if you're interested in more Canon EFM stuff, I've just put up a video that I made on the Canon M6 Mark II and the Canon M100. And I've just placed a playlist um, of all the Canon EFM videos that I have made. Like if you like the video, comment if you want to tell me more absurd camera choices that you make. And check out my Instagram if you have not. All the links are all in the description. And I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.